Allora, eh, possiamo parlare in italiano? Eh, May we speak eh, Italian? Buongiorno, eh, buon pomeriggio. Good morning or good afternoon or good night. Good evening to all those in attendance, even remotely, for anyone who is attending this international conference. My name is Mario Marazziti. With the community of Sant'Egidio, uh, it's a long time that I we try to fight against the death penalty, and we are happy to see that uh, since when we started, uh, the world has changed uh, on that. Uh, so I'm contento che possiamo dire So I'm very glad to say that over the past 25 years, there has been a great change in terms of the death penalty. It used to be 16 countries that in 1975 had abolished the death penalty across the world, whereas now it's 150 countries that no longer have the death penalty and 20 still resort to it. Today this press conference is a very particular one because on the 25th of January, should it happen, the will be a death penalty executed with nitrogen gas hypoxia for again in Kenneth Smith, which already one year ago the state of Alabama tried to kill after 25 years in death row. And for 24 hours they were not able to implement the execution protocol using lethal injection because they failed to find, find the right vein in four hours for the backup of the execution protocol. And now they might set a new standard in terms of lack of humanity. The execution of Kenneth Smith, should it happen, would be the litmus test of the level of civilization in the world today, because it would set a new standard. It would give the possibility of killing a human being for the first time, resorting to a method that veterinary science veterinarians do not want to use to kill animals, with the exception of large animals, namely pigs, just for pigs. In the case of pigs, the protocol envisages a sedation. In this case, the Alabama protocol does not envisage sedation, but we do not want sedation for someone who is killed with nitrogen. What we want is to halt this execution because the world cannot afford to step back, go back to this atrocious killing using a method that is considered not humane, not human, for killing the animals we eat. So this is a press conference that is somewhat odd. We want to save Kenneth Smith's life and we want to make sure that the state of Alabama does not commit such an atrocious, shameful crime. And we also ask for a moratorium 
And we want to stress how urgent it is to stop this culture of death that is clouding the judgment of mankind, making it more cruel. In the case of Kenneth Smith, the never-ending war of a state versus an individual, which is just a killing fury, a killing frenzy. And this is the exact opposite, theoretically, of therapeutic fury, the never-ending attempt to save human life, which uh, civil society seems to reject because it considers it too much. But this is about killing fury. In this way, the state of Alabama seems to have the terrible ambition of setting a new standard that is just getting worse, which is a standard that is very debatable. And it goes back to the death penalty once again. For this reason, among the many things that the community of Sant'Egidio has, the many initiatives of the, that the community of Sant'Egidio has fielded over the past month to stop this shameful uh, death penalty, is the request to halt it. It has been sent to the governor of Alabama. An international request has been sent to her by the several religious leaders at an international level to stop, to halt this execution through nitrogen gas asphyxiation, hypoxia. The network of interreligious relations that Sant'Egidio has set up at an international level got going and has asked the governor of Alabama to stop, to stop all this. The state of Alabama currently seems to want to go down in history with a negative record and staying in history with this record negative record. In the meantime, the man, the individual who killed, Kenneth Smith, who killed with a partner in crime, received $1,000 for this execution because the husband of the victim hired them to cash in the life insurance over on his wife. So the two young men who were hired low cost by a man who had another project, this, that is what happened. And Kenneth Smith has already been in death row for 35 years because of this. In many Western countries, after 30 years, people are released, inmates are released. Even more so, someone like Kenneth Smith, who had no precedent, no criminal record before that. His criminal record was clean before that event. And he was not a violent person, he was not violent in prison. And there are already three people who have died because of this. The victim, the partner in crime, and the husband of the victim who hired the murderers, who committed suicide. Again, this is killing fury. Are three dead people not enough? No, we need one more in order, in inverted commas, to do justice. The state of Alabama wants to go down in history for the use of nitrogen on human beings. And the state of Alabama wants to go down in history for killing the second human being in history, in modern history, who has survived in the United States a death penalty. Because Kenneth Smith, as we know, has already been in the death chamber for four hours. He was punctured all over the body 
because they were trying to find the right vein for the lethal injection. I won't uh, zero in on the trauma that this can bring about. Kenneth Smith himself the other day uh, over the phone said they are bringing back to me to the place where they tried to kill me for four hours. Do they know what this means? What it means to take someone to an extermination camp, then taking him out, then bring him in back to this torture chamber. Now, in the Middle Ages, whoever survived such an event was released. In ancient times, anyone who survived the death penalty for any reason, anyone who managed to defeat a lion, was then released. Not this time. It is not sufficient for the state to have tried for four hours to kill him. So if the death penalty shall be performed, the world will go back to the Middle Ages. And should this happen, the world will not come up with sanctions against the state who enforces this cruelty. And therefore they will become accomplices and they will, the world will accept this lower standard. So here is the culture of life versus the culture of death in a time of war and wars, never-ending wars, wars that even amid propaganda are wars that show that we are witnessing a propaganda of violence and we risk getting used to it. The world has, with great effort, conquered the abolishing of slavery and torture, though they are still practiced in a hidden way, perhaps somewhere. But the torture of a second execution, in this case, actually officially endorses the use of torture in specific circumstances. That is why I believe that we must find a way to halt this execution, even if it's a last gasp attempt, because we know that the entire system of the death penalty, of the lethal injection, is already going through a crisis. We are now resorting to nitrogen to kill because lethal injections no longer seem to work very well. And this crisis of lethal injections began to be particularly noticeable when in 2009-2010 the community of Sant'Egidio uh, working with the association Nobody Touch Kane, Nessuno Tocchi Kane, was working to find a way to stop the production of one of the three drugs used in the lethal injection. And this drug was being produced in Italy. So we were fighting that. So since that moment, that's less than 15 years, all pharmaceutical companies in the world, the major pharmaceutical companies, outlawed anyone who used their drugs to kill rather than to give pain relief. Since then, the number of botched executions have been soaring. They have come up with other systems using greater doses of the other drugs, cyanide and other drugs, 
che a volte hanno creato l'effetto paradosso and this has caused a paradoxical event executions lasting 45 minutes some, some sort of torture or we get botched executions and this is the case of Kenneth Smith and this is where creativeness has reached a new standard for killing and the world does not need this let me finish by saying that Alabama is a very important state. It is a symbolic state, and once again, it is very symbolic. That's where the great battles for civil rights began in the United States. Rosa Parks, the boycotting of buses in 1955, so many battles for civil rights up to the Selma Montgomery march, those three marches in mid-March when Martin Luther King and civil rights association demonstrators were took to the streets, they increased from 625,000 and they were beaten. And on the way back, Viola Chiuzzo, a militant a white woman, a militant for civil rights, and she was massacred, she was beaten to death by the Ku Klux Klan. Alabama was Lost, was losing them because of this racial segregation, and it will become once again loser state if they carry on with their nitrogen gas execution. It is a state that is loved by many Americans, by tourists, because of their beautiful beaches, emerald waters. If you Google Alabama, this is what Google will tell you. It's the golf paradise. Relax in a beautiful, relaxing place amid the chance of birds. The community of Sant'Egidio reckons that if this execution will be performed, if this shameful execution will be performed from Italy and from Europe, from the Western world, Italy, Europe and the Western world must find a way to discourage all forms of tourism of Europeans in Alabama and investments of Italian and European as well as investments by Italian and European companies in Alabama. The greatest investor in Alabama is Mercedes when it comes to the automotive sector. Are there alternatives in the United States for investing? Yes, they do exist. Should there be economic stimulus, economic stimuli, well, it can be beneficial to invest elsewhere in the United States. We have seen that even in the United States, we have reached an all-time low over the past 20 years in terms of death penalties following the abolition, the banning of one of the drugs that are required for the lethal injection. And if we have, we have noticed we have achieved an important result then. So if this execution were to try to set a new standard, then I think it will be high time it might take a while, about 10 years. It might be high time for the Western world to think about where they should be investing and divesting. And this should involve both governments and private entrepreneurs. So, sabotaging, boycotting, or 
buses back then is something we can take you from in order to sabotage investments in Alabama and where wherever the death penalty is performed. We are willing to answer any questions from the floor. But let me stress this once again. It's the culture of life versus the culture of death. It's not just about an execution, a death penalty. You will have to use the microphone. Buongiorno. Good morning, uh, ANSA Press Agency. A question on this very last part. This proposal hypothesis of sabotaging in terms of investments, private investments and government investments. Can we have a little extra detail? Is this a campaign that is Italian, European? You mentioned Mercedes. Has Mercedes already said something in this regard? Well, Italy buys roughly 100 million goods from Alabama some way and exports 200 goods worth 280 million euros. Germany, on the contrary, is the second or fourth partner, so it's about 350 million with Germany both. In realtà, incoming eh, and outbound. So, faremo, eh, this is a proposal we will la, submit should Kenneth Smith be executed. And eh, I think it is possible to gradually, on a voluntary basis, for enterprises to come up with alternative solutions for investment, for investing in the United States, uh, respecting human rights. Why are we doing this? Because all the money that comes from Italy or from Europe will, if it goes to Alabama, will benefit a system that considers all this to be normal, normal. And this is not compatible with the Charter of Values of the European Union. And it is not compatible with the active political commitment that, on an international level, Italy and EU member states have been pursuing to stop, to abolish the death penalty across the world. Any other question? Alabama has nothing to lose. If they stop this execution, it will only be beneficial to them. They won't save any lives. They will just be killing one more person. They will create an embarrassing standard in the methods used for killing human life. And they will go down in history in a negative way. And history has been trying to heal for decades, for a century, in Alabama, where there have been a lot of killings. So you're trying to heal, amend man that image and now suddenly they fall back into it, they plunge back into it. We want the local public opinion to know that silence, simply getting used to all this, would truly lower the standard of human civilization. It's the litmus test of the Western civilization when it comes to life right now.
Sì. Phil, Grazie, il Phil. microfono. Microfono, Phil. The Solicitor General of Alabama, the, basically the state's justice minister, said, I quote, the most painless and humane method of execution known to man. Alabama has adopted the modo più inocchio, più umano di uccidere. The most harmless way of killing. How do you? answer that. You said we're going back to the Middle Ages. They're saying that if things should go well, so to speak, if this man, if Ken Smith shouldn't vomit, then this is a very humane way of killing, according to them. Well, firstly, personally speaking, I have no preference in terms of killing methods. I reckon that the world of the death penalty uh, is uh, basically a hypocrisy. They're trying to tell you what, that what they're doing is painless to depict as normal something that is not normal and not humane. Basically killing, taking one's life. So stoning someone to death, the guillotine, hanging, shooting. The several methods the world has resorted to over 4,000 years of history for killing people. Uh, methods that make no difference to me. The only difference is that the world is trying to resort to a method that seen from the outside is less hateful because the guillotine was when it was introduced it was thought up to speed things up because hanging took too long. But guillotine too as commune said, had some botched execution, or the head was still moving after the execution. This is all unacceptable, unbearable. So if you... Sorry, only the question is long. I'll, I'll get back to that. So if... Apparently, we're looking for a method that, from the outside, seems to be less cruel, because one thinks that the executed person is not suffering. That's how we came up with the idea of lethal injection in 1982, for the first time in Texas, Hansfield. And again... This was introduced because sometimes with the uh, electric chair, the images, the situation was really terrible. People were electrocuted, the, uh, things didn't go well all the time. We have seen, however, that in, with lethal injection, paralysis, the lack of expression does not mean that the execution was painless. Simply, the individual could not express their pain. So from the outside, fine, it was okay, but in the inside, you feel you are exploding, you're dying, and you cannot even cry out. For this reason, we came up with a campaign that has identified the weak link and we banned the third group of drugs. What the Alabama solicitor stresses is wrong. It's false. Would you like to repeat the verb you used? What, what he said? Painless and humane method of execution Perfetto. known to man. Uh, known to man. È falso. Known to man. Right, that is false. Uh, it is unknown to man. It is actually unknown to man because it has never been tested on a human being. Theoretically, it is possible for it to be a method 
meno doloroso di altri is less painful than others on paper. But what the solicitor said is wrong. It is unknown to men. Because non è conosciuto, non è mai stato sperimentato. It is unknown to man, it has never been tested on a human being, so it will be the first time that it will be tested on a human being. So while hoping that you might they might prove it is a very uh, a painless method. But in doing so, a human being will be used as a test animal to prove this. That's the first thing I'd like to say. The second thing is that the solicitor himself said that if there are no problems, if he doesn't vomit and so on, but nobody knows what will happen. Even lethal injection many times seem to work fine, but over time the number of botched executions has increased, not only since we uh, put the whole system in crisis by banning the use of barbiturates, the pentobarbital and other similar drugs. There were botched executions even before that, executions that went on for 15 minutes, needles that were taken out and then had to be inserted again and so on. Or the situation may vary from person to person. Some people fall asleep straight away and die straight away, some don't. Then again, the lack of pain is simply apparent, seen from the outside. So the idea that an execution can be seamless and a person seems to just faint and die asphyxiated, well, we actually don't know if that individual, before dying asphyxiated, dies before they faint or whether they, whether they feel they are fainting and died. Clearly, the pigs have never told us what they experience. They lose consciousness before dying. Are they still conscious even if they seem to be sleeping, to have fainted. Nobody knows, and nobody can tell this. Either way, no drug is so important, so crucial for it to be used as a drug for the first time on a live human being against their will. Even drug testing, drug experimentation, is carried out using people who volunteer, who are available to test the beneficial effects of a new drug. But there is no consensus here. This is something that is done against someone's will. We don't know about the internal reactions. There are no studies, there is no evidence. So what the solicitor said is simply wrong. While it does, however, reassure the public opinion. Naturalmente, <laughs> Clearly, there are a whole number of problems that might show up. The face mask might not seal properly, so perhaps little oxygen will uh, go in, so the execution will last longer, so the time before dying will be longer, and that might raise the consciousness of the individual. Perhaps some air will go in. It is not a device that was specifically designed for killing that face mask. So there might be some other reaction as well. For example, the individual might vomit, and you will suffocate because of your own vomit, not because of the lack of oxygen. So, this killing fury is the only thing that can properly describe all this. Why should we do it? And furthermore, this is someone that they 
already tried to kill? Has he not paid enough for his actions? It is pointless. It is wrong. Are there any other questions? Naturalmente, se accadesse, fossero. Clearly, should this happen? E quindi venisse poi divulgato che è andato tutto liscio, che è un nuovo metodo in dolore. Should they say that everything went fine and a new painless method has been identified? Ha messo nei loro ordinamenti addirittura prima. We know that two other more states have included this method in the death penalty system. That's Oklahoma and Mississippi. So if this should happen, then probably other states will follow. And that is another reason to avoid creating a precedent. Non esiste un metodo indolore di uccidere. There is no painless method for killing. That is hypocrisy. That's the structured hypocrisy to be found in all death penalty executions, regardless of the method. It's like saying that there is that justice is always right. No, that is not possible. Microphone, please. Un microfono per Pachilè. Mi chiedo solo se non c'è una contraddizione. I'm simply wondering whether there is no, there is some contradiction in what the solicitor said, because we read that the product has been banned. It's been prohibited for use on animals because it is too painful, it causes too much pain. The Association of Veterinary Doctors do not want to include it in the protocol for killing animals. I don't know the reasons. I didn't read something about excessive pain. When it was introduced in the parliamentary debate in Alabama, those who mentioned it said that it had actually been previously tested because it is known that when there is a fire and people suffocate, they suffocate because there is a lack of oxygen and they die because they inhale nitrogen. That was the test. That was the experimentation that was mentioned and deemed valid when it was when this method was first proposed in Alabama. Frankly, that's quite embarrassing. If there are no more questions, I think we can end it here. I thank you very much because, as you might have understood, this is a very important step for the community of Sant'Egidio. It's about civilization. In a time of war, furthermore, so we must allow the culture of life to prevail over the culture of death. We cannot accept the culture of death. Thank you.